In the 1850s, the only way children could receive an education was through private schools in St. Joseph. But not all parents could afford to send their children to private schools. E.B. Dealey, the superintendent, had his home and he had a little school building in back, which he called the St. Joseph Classical Institute, which he had started when he first came to St. Joe. Because when Neely came here, there were no public schools in St. Joe. The only schools that existed were private schools. Uh, uh, Mrs. Israel Landis uh, had a school for girls in her home, and uh, a man named Raffington, and there were schools at uh, DeKalb and, and that area around. Finally, the St. Joseph public school system was established in 1860. With the Civil War breaking out in 1861 and only after operating for one year, the public school was shut down until the Civil War was coming to a close. Due to the Civil War, it uh, restarted again in 1865. Uh, it actually started with three school buildings and one of those buildings uh, was actually present day Humboldt. It went through a few name changes early on, but the present day Humboldt is actually one of the three original school buildings in this district. Uh, there's been around 155 schools in the history of our school district and so it's pretty remarkable that one of those is actually still with us today, one of those original sites. Actually parts of Humboldt, uh, the, the lot itself has been there since that time, but I think the oldest part of Humboldt is 1907, so you can see how, how, how uh, old it, uh, how long it's been around. We actually had the second high school in the state, public high school. Um, St. Louis had the first one in 1852. Uh, we opened our first high school in 1861, even though it was a pretty short time before it, then it restarted. And then Kansas City was actually behind us in uh, 1867. After the school district was formed, they found that there were enough students in the city who had enough education that they were ready for high school. And so the school district approached E.B. Neely to become principal of the high school and hold high school classes in his little classical building. Unfortunately, we don't have that building anymore. It, we lost it during urban renewal. Neely uh, served as principal for about four years and then gave that up uh, because they asked him to be super, superintendent of schools. Uh, Neely served um, 40 years as superintendent and during that time we went from three, three buildings with two grades in each building. There was an intermediate and a primary in each building and then the high school. So we had seven buildings uh, with room for somewhere around 500 students. And that's the one thing that always bothered Neely all of his life as superintendent was that we never had enough schools to take all the kids. After schools reopened, a need for black schools was realized with the increasing population of black children in the city. Schools for African Americans actually started very early in St. Joseph. The first school set up by the school district was in some rented rooms in the basement of the African American, ba excuse me, African Baptist Church in the neighborhood of Fourth and Francis, and it was established in 1866. And it was there, uh, I think, for about four or five years, and then it moved into another that building that was already in existence, and then moved into another building, and so on and so forth. And it just kept going until the what was known as the first colored school, the second colored school, and the third colored school will all, all merged into, I believe, the Lincoln School. And that served the African American students in the northern part of town. There was Douglas School, will serve the southern uh, parts of town in the south end. Right. Those were the grammar schools, the elementary schools, and like I said, there were several elementary schools, but there was only one high school for African American students, and that was the first colored high school. And all of the students from the grammar schools went into the colored high school, and then that colored high school eventually became Bartlett High School. Bartlett Brothers was a family, they were listed as, quote, benefactors of the school. And they were philanthropic within the town. I don't, they were, I think they were involved in real estate, other business ventures. There was a building that had their name downtown called the Bartlett Building. Bartlett Park is named in, in their honor. And I think they just provided monies and were very philanthropic in the community and provided a, you know, enough money and benefactors and things for the school that it was named Bartlett High School. In 1954, St. Joseph Public Schools became the first in the nation to allow for desegregation. After desegregation in 1954, the Bartlett High School became Horace Mann.
During that time, 1895 uh, all the way up to 1920, there were lots of uh, bonds being passed in the school district and the uh, success rate on those elections was remarkable. A lot of the elections were 82 to 87 percent yay votes. And then later, in 1928, did pass a $2 million bond, which actually built a lot of things, including uh, Central High School. For years, um, they didn't put students at Central High School because, this, of course, the Depression came on in the 1930s and the evaluation of the district uh, went down, uh, collection rates went down, um, and so the school district was short of cash and didn't have money to furnish the building. And so for quite a few years the, there was no students at Central High School. And finally through uh, volunteer labor, um, government programs like WPA, things like that, uh, we had some help to finish uh, Central and the playing field down at Benton, different projects within the city, uh, and Central was out, uh, able to uh, put students in there. The public school district shares the same building with the St. Joseph Downtown Public Library and has done so since the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, the school district actually ran a bond for $100,000 in 1900 and the district, uh, patrons of the district passed that bond and started work on this building that we sit in and that was completed in 1901. It was uh, made of Silverdale sandstone. The cost ended up being $105,000. The architect, like many other buildings, uh, was E.J. Eckel and the builder was Charles Nolan. And so we've always had a relationship with the library. The building was built so that the library could be housed on the first floor and the district could have offices and a boardroom and a big teacher workroom on the second floor. Many of St. Joseph's public school buildings built in the early 1900s have either been closed or the property sold due to high maintenance costs. The school district in these past few years has gone out and did a went through a large process that involved the community. That's called the PAC process. They're planning a, a course together. Um, and that process went over about three year period. And out of that um, came the need for some new school buildings. The school buildings in the school district this time average close to 80 years uh, on the average um, uh, how new the building is, the age of the building. And so it's definitely time to add some new buildings to the district and by the August of 2014, we should have two new elementary buildings in the school district. Uh, one down on the Carden Park, um, uh, down Carden Park in the uh, south uh, part of the district and then a new northeast school. What does the future hold for the school district? We're getting ready to close down Hall School. Um, here in another year or a little over a year and that building you know obviously shows its age and has a lot of issues that would make it very difficult to go on um, and so we have a lot of issues like that really the infrastructure um, you know you can keep them up so far but at some point you really have to put a lot of money into those buildings or uh, put new buildings up. So one of the things that's going that's changing just in the past few years is that uh, we're not only educating kindergarten now through uh, the 12th grade in our school system, but we're also educating those preschool children. And so that's, you know, one thing that's going to be coming in the future is more preschool age programs.